Moving dogs across long distances can be a stressful affair. That plane was coming from Louisiana area. It had a total of 53 dogs um, and three passengers. And that's when everything goes right. This was a relatively uh, catastrophic landing. Today, the harrowing tale of what started as a routine transport flight and the bonds it created in the community. Hello, I'm James Jacobson in Maui, Hawaii. And I'm Claire Mansell in London, England. Welcome to Dog Edition. Where voices from around the world consider all things dog. Dog Edition is the first show designed for you to listen to while you walk your dogs. On November the 15th of last year, 53 dogs were on board a twin-engine turboprop aircraft, but that plane never made it to its final destination. Lake Country Fire and Rescue with the Waukesha Sheriff's Department was dispatched to Western Lakes Golf Course for the report of an aircraft that had crashed. An aircraft that had crashed. That and a lot more on today's episode. So if you love dogs as much as we do, pause what you're doing, leash up your pup, and let's go for a walk. Because we've got a lot to talk about on today's episode of Dog Edition. Hey Pepper, want to go for a walk? It's an average winter morning at the Western Lakes Golf Club in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Jason Heltz, the general manager, is going about his usual business. I was sitting in my office and I, I got a phone call from our superintendent and he told me about a, a plane that had just crashed on the golf course. Witnesses quickly call 911. We did have two employees working on the course that morning and one of them just happened to be looking that direction and he witnessed the plane coming in low and, and, and touching down and bouncing through the fairway and snow flying everywhere and I guess it was a pretty surreal experience for him. Within minutes, first responders had arrived. I got down there maybe 15 minutes after the crash and there was already emergency personnel on scene. On our first company's arrival, we found that we had a large twin-engine turboprop aircraft which had belly landed upon the fifth hole, it went to the second, and then ended up on the third. The plane first touched down on our fifth green, and then it went through a couple of trees that are next to the green that actually took the wings off the airplane. And then it went through a marshy area and uh, through a fairway on the second hole and ended up next to a bunker on the third hole. The wings actually came off of the aircraft and then they came to rest several hundred feet after where they originally tried to place the aircraft. Lake County Fire and Rescue Assistant Chief Matthew Herder says that the wings getting torn off, that turned out to be a good thing. Because of the way that this particular aircraft is designed, the majority of the fuel was actually carried in the wings. And so that fuel essentially dispersed into the atmosphere during the crash and was not a significant issue once it came to rest. So. That became a, a very good thing for the people and for the canines that were on board because it separated the hazard from the aircraft. Wow, who would have thought that a plane crashing and losing its wings was a good thing? And not only that, Jim, but also the timing of this crash turned out to be really fortunate. No one was out on the links that day. We were essentially closed down for the season. It was the beginning of November and it was snowing that day. Just a week earlier, actually, it was pretty nice out and, and we were packed. So we would have golfers all over the place a, a week earlier. Deputy Lake County Fire Chief Tony Wasileski was one of the first responders on the scene. There was one engine that was down on the ground. We were then told by dispatch that there was three personnel and unnumbered amount of dogs. The smell of jet fuel permeated the air. There was a few dogs that were barking, but otherwise the dogs were pretty quiet. I think because they were kind of scared. I bet they were scared. Nothing was burning. There were no explosions, just the fuselage of a wingless twin-engine plane resting in the snow. The three people on board the plane were taken to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. 
Now, the dogs were kept in cages for the flight, of course, but some of them broke during the crash. So first responders and golf course employees found themselves having to wrangle these dogs in the snow. I'm sure they were eager to get out of their cages. Meanwhile, six miles away in the Waukesha County Airport, Jessica Pincus was waiting. They said, you know, the plane has has landed and clearly I'm, I'm at the airport. It hasn't landed here. She's the director of special projects at the Human Animal Welfare Society in Waukesha, Wisconsin. But they said, everybody's okay. I mean, those words came right after. So I, it was, okay, now, now what do we do? So getting the news that everyone was okay was a good thing. But Jessica and her team headed to the golf course to figure out what was next. After the break, what they found when they arrived at the crash site. You just saw all the emergency vehicles, you saw crates, and you know, you saw the, once you got down there, you could, you see the plane and, and the broken crates and things of that nature. We will be right back. And now a message from your dog. Every day with you is like a day at the beach. And I want as many beach days as possible. I want to run and sniff and find a good stick to carry. I want to roll in the grass and warm my belly in the sun. I want to walk with you, run with you, sleep with you, eat with you. And when I eat with you, I want Ever Pup. The green grassy beef liver spiked smell wakes my senses. You may not realize this, but it tastes like homemade gravy, especially when you wet it. It infuses any food you give me with health and life and vibrancy. I can feel it. Everpup traveling to every cell in my body, nourishing each one. Does it roll back time? Of course not. Not really. But it helps me feel like I'm on top of the world. I'm so glad you're giving it to me every day. Because every day I'm so glad to be with you. I'm so grateful to be your dog and for the ever pup you give me. So now that you know what your dog wants, get Everpup, the ultimate dog supplement. Everpup is available in select pet shops and on Amazon. But to get the best price possible, join the Everpup Club at everpupclub.com, where you'll get your first jar for just $8 with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Go to everpupclub.com and use the discount code DPN. That is everpupclub.com. Everpup, every day. Welcome back. Before the break, Jessica Pincus of Hawes, the Human Animal Welfare Society in Waukesha, Wisconsin, learned that a plane carrying 53 dogs meant for her care had made an emergency landing on a golf course. So the team hopped into their vans and rushed over to the crash site. We're greeted by the emergency staff and uh, loaded loaded the critters up. Many of them had them in their, the police officers and things like that would ha- had them in their trucks. And some of the golf course folks had them, you know, in this building and that building. And um, some of them had them wrapped up in their sweaters <laughs> when we got there. I love that image. They're, they're the soft guys, aren't they? Wrapping up the dogs in their sweaters in the snow. <laughs> they don't care about themselves. So somehow, despite this incredible crash and the separation of the wings from the plane and everything else, all of the dogs were fine. Wow. We gathered everybody up, got them back to Hawes, where our vet was already here waiting for us to start triaging everybody and kind of looking over everybody, making sure everybody was indeed okay, which everybody was, thankfully. Um, you know, there were some scratches maybe on the face or, you know, something like that when the crates may have broken. These dogs were being moved from crowded shelters in Louisiana to ones in Wisconsin, which, especially in the wintertime, have a lot of open kennel space. Now, we've done an episode about why shelters in southern United States find themselves with more dogs than they can properly care for. And we'll put a link to that in today's show notes. But if more people spayed and neutered their pets, it would really help to reduce the problem. Mm -hmm. And the overcrowding in southern shelters is something that Hawes discovered about 10 years ago. Back then, Hawes would sometimes find itself with not enough dogs, and people would come in and ask to adopt a pet, but the kennels were empty. 
Whores used to look at their empty kennels as a good sign. They were doing their job and placing all their dogs into good homes. One of these winters, partner came from down south and she stepped in to visit our shelter. And she said, wow, where are all your dogs? And we said, well, this is all we have right now. And she said, well, you know, we have an overabundance. We are at a place where we have to make decisions for euthanasia. And you have people here that I see that are looking for pets. You know, would would you be open to taking some of our dogs? So the team considered it and ultimately decided that they wanted to help. We started really small, just like maybe five or six dogs every couple of weeks um, would come to Hawes um, and we would place them. The program grew over time. Five or six dogs every couple of weeks became 20 or 30 dogs every two weeks. As time went on, the logistics of moving the dogs became more and more complex. Volunteers driving maybe an old RV, um, just, you know, loaded up with kennels with an aisle down the middle, you know, so they could go and check water and things like that. But dogs on each side, you know, stacked three high. Or maybe it was a minivan that went down halfway to meet and they maybe only got three or four Um, Maybe they were litters of puppies with their moms or something of that nature. Eventually, it just became too many to drive. Especially for places like Southern, you know, Louisiana, that's a really long car ride. And with a long car ride for a dog with multiple, you know, dogs, lots of stress um, can bring about disease and things like that. So a short plane ride is much preferred when it comes to the health and well-being of the dog. And of course, a plane ride is a bit more expensive than a car. But Jessica Pincus says that there are multiple nonprofits who help raise money for these flights. Pause accepts about one plane a month of dogs, barring any anything that might pop up, but generally one plane a month. If you do the math, that's something like 600 dogs a year Mm. that Hawes is helping to find good homes for and saving from possible euthanasia. And the program's been going on for a decade now. We're talking about thousands of dogs here. And they handle all sorts of dogs too. The ages range from puppies through to adults. Jessica Pincus says that her favorite dogs are the senior dogs. The last two I adopted were eight years old. Um, So one of mine came from a flight and one of mine came from a bus, both of them from down south. Which brings us back to November the 15th. It's one of these flights carrying dogs from overcrowded shelters in the south that crashed just a few miles out from the airport where Jessica Pincus was waiting. The words that, you know, never everybody is okay. You mean everybody, all the dogs, yes, everybody is okay. You know, hearing those words right away was just remarkable. And then when you get there and and you see what, what they all walked away from, that was kind of the wow moment wow, you know, this was kind of a, this, you know, this, this was a a big deal. A golf course is a nice wide open space to bring down a plane for an emergency landing. But of course, it's not really meant for that either. Yeah. And Jason Heltz, the manager of Western Lakes Golf Club, says the crash is requiring some serious cleanup on the course. They uh, ended up removing about 80 ton of of soil. So it was, the hole was, you know, somewhere around eight feet deep and and they removed all that soil and, and got it out of here. That 80 tons of soil had been contaminated by jet fuel that was still remaining in the fuselage after the wings were torn off. They're pretty confident that the jet fuel did not make it into our streams and, and pond system that we have running through the course. Um, While it did go through this marshy area, they had all of the the booms that the fire department immediately set out in those ponds, you know, to collect any any fuel that would be floating on the surface. And they did not test positive for any of those areas. There was also some damage to the course itself, but he doesn't think that that'll impact the players. Golfers can, you know, take a drop if they were to hit into those areas where they can you know, just move their ball off to the side so they're not not affected and, and continue on play with the hole. But of course, those areas need to be repaired as well. So the second fairway that it skidded through is just going to have to be overseeded. And that area in the rough is actually where the plane came to rest. And that's going to need quite a bit of work. The club still doesn't know how much it'll cost to fully repair the damage. 
But money, damage and repairs are not how the people of Western Lakes will remember the crash. That's because one of the employees ended up making a connection during the rescue. Our superintendent actually adapted one of the dogs. And if you go to the Western Lakes Golf Club this spring, you just may be able to meet Sally, that rescue dog for yourself. Of course, she'd be allowed on the golf course. Our mechanic has a dog as well. And Sally is not the only lucky dog who was adopted by someone they met on the course on that fateful day. That's right. One of the most senior people on the scene who were in the rescue that day, he had a little magic happen. Towards the end of the rescue, there was a few cages left. Those were the broken cages. There was a dog that got out of one of the cages. She came running to me, jumped in my arms, and then gave me a couple kisses. I held her for a little bit, passed her along to the maintenance crew that were putting loose dogs with no cages in a, a maintenance shed. Deputy Chief Wasileski went on with his work, wrangling loose dogs and shepherding them back to Hawes. However, about 45 minutes later, there was a dog that was being walked up from the maintenance shed, which happened to be the same one that jumped into my arms. She saw me, started wiggling her tail, and came towards me. I petted her a few times, and then uh, that was pretty much it for the call. Uh, went home that night, talked to my wife about the dog and uh, the other dogs that we helped get up. She said that we need to try to find the one that I took off the plane that kind of made a connection. And I'm like, ah, we don't need any more dogs because we already had two. And she goes, well, let's just go look at her once. So we went the next day to the Walkshire Humane Society and they brought her in. She bypassed my wife, jumped in my arms, again, gave me kisses. And I, I told my wife that I guess that's, we got another dog. They named her Marley because they love reggae music. Jessica Pincus says a couple of other first responders also adopted dogs that they had helped rescue. I think that's great. I mean, what a connection, what a story. You know, they made a connection with these these poor critters that had no idea what, what they were getting through. I mean, a plane ride alone, think about it for an animal, right, is is crazy and just a normal plane ride. Um, and then to go through what these critters fell through and and to look up and see these men and women caring for them right away, you know, there with open arms to to comfort them and, and keep them warm. Uh, it was snowing that day, of course. And, you know, what a connection some of these folks made and lifelong stories. You know, those people will tell their stories about their pet forever to everybody they meet. <laughs> there are some amazing pictures of these first responders who rescued some of these dogs. And we share those in links from today's show notes. Well, that is all we have time for on today's episode of Dog Edition. If you enjoyed the show, then share it with a friend. We love it when you head out on a dog walk and mention Dog Edition to someone who maybe is wandering along with their little headphones on and you say, I've got a little podcast you would enjoy listening to. And also, don't forget to follow along in your podcast app. And if you do that, you will catch our new show, which is Hound Headlines, which will be dropping on this podcast feed next week and is our look at the week's dog-related news stories. I'm Claire Mansell. And I'm James Jacobson. On behalf of all of us here at Dog Podcast Network, I'd like to wish you and your dog a very warm aloha. Aloha.